Terence Howard is on the brink of revealing a 6,000-year-old secret that has perplexed and intrigued humanity for countless generations. What lies ahead is not just astonishing, but profoundly transformative. Get ready to immerse yourself in this extraordinary voyage as we unravel the mysteries that have remained shrouded in antiquity. I want you guys to know about a 6,000-year-old secret. 6,000 years, mankind has been trying to decipher this one little thing called the flower of life. Now you know this is one of the oldest symbols in um, human history, right? This symbol was found in the Temple of Osiris in Egypt, and it had been molecularly burned into the wall, and it's 6,000 years old. This, this same symbol has been found in the, the forbidden temples in China, sitting under the fufu dogs, and the foot on it, the flower of life, saying whoever controlled that flower of life controlled the universe. There were secrets in that flower of life that da Vinci spent his whole life trying to uncover. There were secrets in that flower of life that Newton spent his whole life in secret trying to uncover. The same secrets that Pythagoras was desperately trying to uncover. But the problem was they kept seeing this in a two-dimensional space. They couldn't get it out of this two-dimensional frame, and as a result, they got stuck in this plane, a flat plane. Now, what da Vinci and all of them wanted to do, they were trying to find a way to bring this flower to life because what is inside of it? Well, apparently, there were secrets inside of it. Shapes, they got the Macurba and all of those other things out of it, but they were misled by something I think called a straight line. You guys believe in straight lines? You believe there's straight lines in the universe? Well, let me hit you with something. All energy in the universe is expressed in what? It's in motion. If something is still, there's no energy. Kinetic, right? All motion is expressed in what? You look at galaxies, are they expressed in straight lines? Expressed in vortices. All vortices are expressed in what? Waves. All waves are curved. Show me a straight line in nature. You show me where the platonic solids come from. Where do they have their foundations in our universe? Are there any straight lines? If you look at anything, there are no straight lines. That's been the mistake. We've been looking at these straight lines, this Euclidean way of thinking and missing the curvature of nature. So here we are, back with the curvature of nature. And you have all these little pieces. Now this has always been an information system. So compa compare some of these points, take a point here, and say, well, what's the space in between all of these things? Now, they've said that all the in-between spaces, if this is the Earth and this is the Moon right here, all this in-between space is filled with what? A void. There's nothing in the void. Well, I found that there is something in the void. The elementary fundamental particles that they've been searching for at the CERN Collider, the Hedron Collider and CERN, I found that their energy signatures matched perfectly to some of the pieces that I was able to pull out of here. Terence Howard's captivating speech on the flower of life not only immerses us in the enigmatic world of ancient mysteries, but also inspires a profound reevaluation of our geometric comprehension. His assertions, far from mere speculation, resonate within a rich tapestry of historical, scientific, and philosophical contexts. As we embark on a journey into the 6,000-year-old secrets of the flower of life, we unveil a narrative that intertwines the quests of brilliant minds such as Leonardo da Vinci, Sir Isaac Newton, and Pythagoras with the modern reimagining of geometry. The flower of life, an intricate symbol comprised of multiple evenly spaced overlapping circles, transcends its mesmerizing design to become a portal into the ancient comprehension of the universe. Its presence in the Temple of Osiris in Egypt and hidden temples under the watchful gaze of foo dogs in China signifies a universal reverence. This symbol, believed to represent the fundamental forms of space and time, visually expresses the intricate connections that life weaves through all sentient beings, hinting at the underlying unity of the cosmos. Terence Howard's admiration for this symbol is not an isolated phenomenon in history. It resonates with other great minds. Leonardo da Vinci, a Renaissance polymath, is renowned for his extensive studies of the flower of life. 
Da Vinci's sketches reveal his fascination with its geometric perfection and its potential to unlock the secrets of the universe. Similarly, Sir Isaac Newton, in his pursuit of understanding gravitational force and the mechanics of the cosmos, delved into ancient knowledge and symbols, including the flower of life. It is suggested that Newton's famous discovery of gravity was part of a larger quest to decipher the cosmic puzzle embedded in these ancient symbols. Pythagoras, the Greek mathematician, also embarked on a journey through these mystical realms, using geometric principles to understand the harmonies of music and the structure of the universe. What Terence Howard brilliantly highlights is the limitation these great minds faced, their confinement within two-dimensional perspectives. Despite their genius, they grappled with the profundity of the symbol, unable to fully transcend its planar representation. This is where Howard's critique of traditional Euclidean geometry opens a new avenue of understanding. Euclidean geometry, the foundation of much of our mathematical and scientific understanding, primarily focuses on flat, two-dimensional planes. However, as Howard eloquently points out, the universe is not confined to flatness. It is a dance of curves, waves, and multi-dimensional forms. Howard's speech resonates with modern scientific understanding, particularly the concept of curved space-time, a fundamental idea in Einstein's theory of relativity. This echoes the ancient wisdom he discusses. The curvature of space and time around massive objects like stars and galaxies is not just theoretical, but observable. Gravitational lensing, the warping of light around massive objects, stands as a testament to the universe's inherently curved nature. Furthermore, Howard's insights find parallels in the realm of quantum physics. The elusive nature of elementary particles, their existence in probabilities rather than definite positions, aligns with the idea of a universe beyond straight lines and predictable paths. This is where Howard's theory about finding something within the void becomes particularly intriguing. The void, often considered empty space, could be teeming with these fundamental particles, invisible threads weaving the fabric of the universe. The flower of life, therefore, is not just an ancient symbol, it is a representation of the universe's deepest secrets. The 6,000-year-old secret encompasses more than a geometric pattern. It delves into the very nature of reality itself. This symbol has transcended millennia, bridging the gap between ancient wisdom and modern scientific understanding inviting us to contemplate the profound mysteries that lie at the heart of our existence. I've spent 45 years searching these things out and trying to figure out what the universe really, how it really worked. And we've come to find that the universe, they are abandoning the standard model, the ideas of black holes and dark matter for an electric model of the universe that is in response to the Birkeland Current and all these things, it's a better version, a better vision of how we should see the universe. That's how, that's how I see it, and I think it should be explored. Like one of the things I've been saying, the Euclidean mindset has kept us so locked away. Like there's tons of paperwork of Da Vinci working on the flower of life and trying to unravel it. But every single existence, every single example, you see him making straight lines and trying to make these straight lines bend in and therefore he was never able to open it up because all the universe is curved, all space is curved. And as a result, what I was doing in trying to find these straight lines, I abandoned the idea of the straight line. The shortest distance between two points is curved space because you cannot force your way straight through space, even electricity, as it moves from the, a southern plane to a northern plane, it always goes northeast in its direction. And, and magnetism, as it expands out, it goes southwesterly. And that's the spin. That's how you always know whether it's magnetism or electricity. It's the spin. Is it northeast or is it southwest? But in trying to define curved matter, I'm so sorry, I get so distracted trying to define the spaces, it allowed me to see that all of these in between, what we have been dealing with is these petals. All of man, mankind have dealt with these petals, but is these other shapes that we've ignored constantly. Well, those other shapes were the in-between spaces. They were the things that filled up the vacuum of space. And all these particles that I have, um, I think are the full proof of that. And it is also the full proof of the wave particle argument.
Well, here we are on this planet. Is, can I do that point? The, our planet is moving away from our sun at six inches a year. You guys know that, 15 centimeters a year, our planet is pushing away from the sun. So in less than uh, half a billion years, our planet will be out of the Goldilocks zone, will be somewhere near where Mars is, somewhere halfway between there. So life will not be able to sus be sustained on this planet anymore. So if we're going to be able to, uh, to sustain ourselves as a species, we have to become interstellar. Not just interplanetary, you have to become interstellar. But with approximations, you cannot become interstellar. You cannot become interstellar with a, a point that will take you all the way over here with a straight line when the actual event is taking place over here when you're going 600 quadrillion miles. You can't make a mistake, you need precision. And that's what the math is about. These pieces predict the natural distri distribution of matter and the distribution of where you can find yourself in that space and I'm confident behind it. For 40 years I've worked on this and um, I think it's ready.